Hi, this is Rick Moranta from Pinched Head. Today we're going to look at how to synchronize audio in Lectora without using Windows Media Audio Events. We'll be using separate audio clips and using actions to synchronize the audio with what's happening on the screen. Let's first take a look at the final product. I'm going to show you how to synchronize your audio with what's happening on the screen without using Windows Media Audio Events. This is a clipboard. This is a filing cabinet. And this is a folder. Hey you, monkey! Get off my screen! Okay, okay, I know. That was a bit lame. But the point is, uh, the image is displayed when I mentioned them. The clipboard, the filing cabinet, and the folder. I'm sure you can do a lot more complicated and interesting things with it. Let's now look at um, how we go about creating that simple synced animation. Okay, we've set up our page with uh, visuals and the text that it's going to appear. The first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that each item that appears is um, set so that it, it's not initially visible. This uh, We can do this by going into the properties of each item and unchecking the, this box here. It's important to do this because we want to control the visibility of each object with an action. The next thing we want to do is create an audio clip for each thing that's going to happen on the screen. Now for this I use a free program called Audacity but uh, you can use whatever uh, audio program that you like but personally I like free. Once we create our four audio files we'll need to import them into a page in Lectora. To do this click on the page and choose Add, Object and Audio or we can right click on the page and choose new object and audio. Either way we'll get to the properties um, menu. Now the first thing we want to do here is change the display to none or invisible. Let's try that again. Now what this uh, does is to ensure that the um, audio when it's on the page does not have an icon or any kind of controller. We want the audio for this to be behind the scenes. So for our purposes here, we're going to leave these boxes unchecked. We don't want it to auto start because we want to control the audio when it plays using actions. So what we need to do now is we need to choose import, file, and then we need to find our file. Now I have a dummy file on my desktop called audio file. I can cl click it here and I can preview it if I want. So let's choose open and OK. So we have our audio file now in our title and it's on our page but it's an mp3 format. Um, you may have imported it in WAV format but we need now to convert it to flash uh, FLV format. What this will do is uh, if your file is large it will compress it and uh, allow it to be streamed from your web page. So to, uh, to convert it we just right click on it and uh, say convert to FLV. You'll see here's compression settings so we'll put that around medium and just uh, press the button to say convert. So it's chugging away and uh, we're waiting for it to finish. Okay, now you'll see that the size has been reduced considerably and uh, we just say yes and uh, the file has been converted. Now for this first uh, paragraph that shows up on the screen called bullet one, um, I've gone on into the properties and I've unchecked the box that says initially visible. That's because I want to use an action uh, to uh, trigger it and to have it show up when I want it to. Um, if you go, if you notice um, in the properties uh, of this action at the page level, uh, there's an on show uh, action, 
that will um, show this text bullet after a delay of uh, 0.5 seconds. All right, so that last action causes the paragraph to show up. Now under bullet one, you'll notice an action that um, basically says that when this paragraph shows up, that it should play an audio file called sync one. Now that sync one is basically the audio that's uh, going to read out what whatever's displaying in that paragraph. So this action basically tells the audio to start playing. Let's take a look at the audio. Here, uh, sync one, which is the audio for that bullet, there's an action here, which basically says that when it's done playing, that it should show an image called green underscore clipboard, which is just this one here below. So um, what we have basically is a triggering mechanism. One thing triggers another, which triggers another, which keeps things in sync really well. Um, there is a, a lot of people use this delayed timing, uh, and you can do that, and you can use it for certain things, and it works well. But sometimes you need to estimate how long things are going to take. This is uh, much more connected from one thing to the next, and I think you'll find it uh, pretty useful. Okay, the action I just showed you, uh, on done playing show clipboard, just basically says when that first paragraph audio is finished, we show the image clipboard. Under the clipboard, there's a couple of actions. The first one basically shows uh, the text after a delay of 0.3 seconds on show. So when the image shows up, it waits and then displays that text. The second one, um, all basically it does is when the image shows up, it tells um, the audio clipboard to play. Now with this command, we've triggered the audio uh, clipboard to start playing. Under uh, the audio clipboard, you'll see that um, there's a command that says when that's done playing, uh, we're going to show the image filing cabinet. And you can have a delay here to fine tune it or no delay. Um, it's up to you uh, when you're looking at it. So the filing cabinet uh, audio is playing. Uh, you'll see there's a you see there's an action here but actually let's go look at the uh, the graphic again we have uh, we we have a, uh, a command that says show the text underneath it and a command that says let's play the filing cabinet audio so let's go back up here where we'll take a look under filing cabinet audio we have a command that says when that's done playing we show the folder image. Now let's go down to the folder image. Uh, we're going to play the folder audio when that shows up. And we're going to play the folder uh, text. Now let's go uh, look under the folder audio. And there is an action that says well, when that's done playing, we show the monkey uh, image that you saw in our uh, initial cheesy demo. Um, I'll just make that visible here and you'll see um, that there's a couple of actions under there but there, under the properties I want to show you there's a transition and I basically have it fly in from the top into that position just to give it some movement. You can do other things using the move to action but I just chose to use this transition. So you'll notice under here there's a couple of actions. Um, one is to uh, to play the monkey uh, audio, the screech, uh, when it shows. Under the uh, monkey audio, there's um, a command that says that when the monkey is done screeching, we play the uh, get lost audio. And that's when I basically tell it to get off the screen. Now under the get lost audio, there's a number of commands that we'll take a look at. The first um, says that when this audio is done playing, we're going to move the monkey from on top of the filing cabinet down to the ground, uh, close to the ground there. The next is we want to hide uh, the text. That's awesome. 
and then we want to move uh, the monkey farther down the screen, off screen. And uh, I put a delay of 3.5 seconds uh, that will cause the monkey to move once again. And then after 5.2 seconds, I want to hide the monkey altogether so that it doesn't appear down at the bottom of the page. I hope this has been helpful. This is Rick Moranta from Pinched Head. Take care.